Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to be playing Shadows of Killforth. We're going to begin the adventure for both of our characters. Now in the setup video, we decided to go with this character, but in the comments section, I asked if you wanted me to use the female standee or the other one, the male. And I had a majority of people asking for the female character just because I think she looks way cooler with the red and the white. I think that's awesome. All right, so we've got our two companions there, and we're going to be going through the Shadows of Killforth and see if we can stop the gloom and take out the Ancients. Now before we do that, we have to look through our character's sagas and and read what we have to do. So our watcher is going to go ahead and do Haunted Past as her saga, and we're going to start with chapter one. It says, Gillian is known amongst the locals as a friendly yet melancholic chap, and may be prone to the occasional excessive mug of hearty mead. But his countenance lately is even darker than usual. Evidently, his friend has gone missing in the woods. The only clues he has regarding his friend's whereabouts were the sounds of clankings of chains in the nights and a wet, chortling, coughing noise making its way into the mountains. So we have to complete this by doing a regale action and spend five gold. Now a regale action we'll get to as we play through, but in order to do it, I need to gain these assets or rumors in order to continue. I need a mountain, a forest, and since we're playing a one or two player game, I need a plains. Now, if I were playing with three or four, I would only need the first two. Now, that's going to be our Watcher's Saga. Let's go ahead and check out our Vampire. So, our Vampire's Saga is going to be Capture Lawbreaker, and we're going to start with Chapter 1. It says, Bold as brass, the escaped murderer has been living among the local townsfolk, telling them lies and tales of woe to convince them of his innocence. You have been tasked by the resident lord with tracking down this ne'er-do-well, who is subsisting solely on the goodwill of those impressionable people. Your first call of order is to find and interrogate the town elder, but reaching him will require a dangerous journey. So again, all of these are going to have to be done using regale actions, and I'm going to need to find these amongst the cards in our assets and rumor pile, and I'll go through all that as we play through the game. But just know this is what we need in order to get through our first chapter of our saga. So we've gone ahead and read through our saga, so we know what we need to do to complete the game and bring out our Ancients so that we can defeat it. Now the only thing left to do is pass out our first hero token. The character that is going to be gaining our first hero token is the one with the highest sneak value. Our Watcher has a 3. Our Vampire, a 2. So that's right, our Watcher is going to be our first hero when our journey begins. Are you excited to see if our two characters can make it through Shadows of Killforth? Or will they fall to the gloom that is encompassing the land? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. So our watcher is going to take her first action, her first action is going to be to move. There's a lot of different actions you can do in this game, but of course moving around gets you to where you need to be. You could also hide, which is why we have this token. I could go ahead and use an action to hide, and what that does is it allows me to gain surprise on any monsters or encounters we find inside the places we move to. Also, if we aren't hidden and we do find an encounter, those monsters are going to gain surprise against us because we were just walking down the lowly road and they jumped out and grabbed us. But of course, with our Watcher, she has a fantastic ability that says that hero is beyond sight. Your foe can never have surprise. So unless she wants to gain an extra combat die moving around, there's really no reason for her to be hidden. So I'm going to choose not to hide, and we're probably going to move over to this Plains location. And the reason I'm choosing that location is if we look at our saga, these down here are the keywords we need to complete our chapter one. So we need a mountain, a forest, and a plains. And right over here is a plains. So if we move over here and there's not an encounter card here, we have to draw one. And when we draw one, we're able to take advantage of whatever's on there. And hopefully it'll have a plains keyword that we can use. So we're going to move our character over there and spend one of our AP to do that. Now, like I said, since there isn't any encounter cards there, 
we're going to take the top card from the Plains deck and see what it is. It is a Goblin Trapper. He's an enemy humanoid and he's in the Plains, so this is going to be perfect. Oh, he's got a trap. Look at that. So when this hits the map, a trap says that I'm going to lose 1 HP. It says the most experienced Goblin Warriors convert the landscape into deadly worn of snares in order to capture their prey. Well, this evil Goblin has already done one point of damage to us. Now, when you take a point of damage, you not only take one point of damage, you also have to take damage that is associated with your AP. Of course, all your health equals AP. And since I've already used one, I can't just lose the hit point that was associated with the AP I've already lost. I have to lose one that I haven't used yet. So technically we have lost a health point and we've also lost an AP. Now we have to go to battle against this giant goblin trapper. All right, so we got our lowly goblin trapper here. He has two dice that he's going to roll against us. So he's going to be the black dice. We're going to be the white dice. So he's going to gain two dice when he goes to attack against us. And he has three health. So we have to actually do three damage to him. Now our watcher, she has two attack dice. So she's going to get two white dice. And then she also gets an extra dice because of her class. She is a ninja. And our ninja allows us to gain an extra white dice as being a ninja. That's awesome. So we get three dice, he gets two dice. Now we have to get successes in order to actually deal damage. In order to get a success, you need a five or a six, and that will equal a success. Anything else is not a success. There is a variant you can play with where fours would also be successes as well if you want to make the game a little bit easier for you. But we're not going to do that. We're going to play it just like it is. So I'm going to have three dice, he's going to have two. Let's see how this goes. We're going to try to take out this goblin trapper. All right, we got one success and he also got a success. So we have done one damage to him. I'm just gonna use these hearts to put up there, but he has also done yet another damage to us. So we're down to two health and only one action point because I have to lose both the action point and the health when I do it. So we're gonna continue fighting here and see how we do. Hopefully he doesn't hit us too much more. Okay, he missed completely, but look at that. So did we, we missed completely as well. So we're gonna keep on fighting. Let's see how this goes. Come on, let's get him this time. All right, we got one, two successes. That's enough to kill him. But look again, he has done another hit to us. So we are have no more AP for this round or this turn, but that's okay. We were able to take out our Goblin Trapper doing three damage, one, two, and three. Now we have managed to take out our Goblin Trapper. Of course, it was at a great loss. We're almost dead and we have no more action points for the rest of this turn, but that's okay. We killed him so we can choose to gain our rewards. The first reward we can choose is if we want to gain the gold that's on this card or if we want to draw a token from the loot bag. Now you have to remember the loot bag has absolutely no gold in it because we had to take it out in the setup due to our ancient. He told us to take all the gold tokens out, which is too bad because those are pretty good. Now, I can either take the one, but really one is probably not all that great. I think I'd rather take something from this loot bag. So we're just going to mix up a little bit. We're going to put our hand into this giant loot bag here, and we're going to draw out one token, and let's see what we found. We have found a map relocate to any Badlands location. All right, that's not too bad. We can use this as a deed, and a deed is a free action you can do at any time during your turn. I could just go ahead and use that to go where I want, go to any Badlands location. Now, the next thing I can choose is I can either take this as a reward, one item card, or I can keep our Goblin Trapper, and he'll help us discover our haunted past because he has a Plains keyword, and that's one of the three keywords we need. So we are going to keep our Goblin Trapper. He's going to be with us with our Nanchaku over in our hand. So that is what we've gained. We've gained this map token, and we were able to take a Goblin Trapper rumor into our hand with the keyword planes. Now, sadly, that's it for her. She's probably not going to be doing anything for actually quite a while because she's going to have to rest up a little bit. But that's the end of our Watcher's turn. Now we're going to move into our Vampire's turn. So we're going to move into our Vampire's turn. She's going to go ahead and figure out where she would be good to go. It says Stranger Enemy in Planes down here on the bottom of our Saga card. So these are where we're going to try to find her keywords. One is Planes, but Stranger and Enemy, they don't actually have a location like Planes. But from what I gather, the color of those words is where you're more often going to find that type of rumor or that type of keyword. So it's going to be probably best to go to a planes location at first. And we are located right next to one. And it's of course where our watcher is and that's just fine. So she's going to move over there and spend one AP. And since there is not an encounter card here, we're going to draw our next 
planes encounter and see what we get. We have got the barrack barracks. All right. It's a place abode and it is planes. Uh Oh, look at it again. Map trap lose one HP. Wow. The old bastion of war has stood here for centuries, but now seems all but abandoned by its previous occupants. So we're going to go ahead and figure out how to do this. Okay. We can either go through with a sneak value or we can try to use our study skill. But first we have to lose one AP and yeah, you guessed it. That means I'm also going to lose or sorry, a health and I'm also going to lose that AP as well. So we're down to only two AP left for our vampire. Hmm. I think she wants to try to take this on, but if we look at her card, she only has a two study and a two sneak value, but her class card does give her one more study, but I still think it's going to be more beneficial to try to do that sneak value of two in order to try to actually make it through our barracks. So if you look at our vampire, we get two white dice to try to complete the quest, the barracks. And our barracks, of course, has a two sneak value here to try to complete it. So we're going to roll up two and hopefully get at least one or two successes. That'd be great. We got one success. That is awesome. And we can use these fate tokens once per turn to go ahead and gain another success. So we have our two successes in order to do that. Now, if I was out of fate tokens, I could give up a rumor card to also be used as a fate token, but you can only use one fate token per round or per turn. So this is the only time she can do it until she makes camp. Now we have successfully made it through the barracks, so let's gain our rewards. So we have successfully gone through the barracks and we could either gain the two gold or that loot token again. I think at this point I am going to take the two gold. I believe in the long run gold is going to be better for us at this point. Now we could also take either the title or this rumor and I am looking for a planes. So again, we're going to take the rumor card into our hand along with that armor that we have that we can find at the fool's den, which isn't too far away from us. So she still has two action points left. And with that first action point, she is going to actually take advantage of this card. If we look at the bottom of the card, it says heroes may perform one move action here to move directly to the black cave. And the black cave is actually right over here, which is why it panned out so far. Now, I don't want to stop here because there's a chance that if I don't, if I finish my turn here, I'm going to lose one hit point because I'm in a gloomed location. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully get through this without too much problems. So since there isn't an encounter card there, we have to take a Badlands encounter. And we have found, what's this? Fallen Shrine. It's a placed respite and Badlands. Now we're not looking for any of this, but look at how much money this thing's worth. Worth five bucks. Map, trophy, force, draw and fully resolve a night card when then play continues as normal. Oh, that's no good. All right, so since this is on the board, I have to go ahead and take advantage of that. So we have to draw a night card. Oh, that's not good because more things are going to fall in the gloom. And also, as you remember, this is our timer as well. So our night card is new religious cult quest destroy revealed. Place this quest at towns, Towers of Cain. It says down here, Sinister cults spring up throughout the wilds, preying on the fears of the weak-willed to pressure sinners into their insidious ranks. All right, and look at here, Tower of Cain falls to gloom. And the Tower of Cain is up here near the top of the middle part of our board. We're going to pull that into gloom and we're going to place that right on that spot there. Now this card does say continue on as normal, right? The play continues as normal. Okay, it says down here, whirls of gloom swirl in the darkness and malice fills the air, sending shivers down the spine. Now this thing's worth five gold and I could probably try one of these two actions to complete this, but it's at the black cave. And if I end my turn here, I'm going to lose a point of health and I only have one action point left. So we're actually just going to move this action point. We're going to use it to move to go up here. And what it says here is heroes gain one action point when they move into this location for the first time on any day. So I pretty much got to move up here for free. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that action point, but we do move into a forest location and we don't have any encounters there. So we have to draw the top card of our forest deck. Let's see what we find. We have found nature spirit. Oh, we're going to have to fight her, an enemy. No, she shouldn't be an enemy. Look at her. She doesn't look that mean. All right. Sacrifice one rumor. Oh, yuck. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. I walked all the way over here to find my armor, and I think I might lose it here. All right, she has three, uh, what is it, health? Let's see what it says down here. The spirits of nature were once beautiful and friendly, but watched in prayer, pure, curious gloom, rot their homes, and corrupt their land has driven them mad. All right, so she's in. She's mad. I guess that makes sense why she's fighting us. All right, so she has three fight. I think we're going to have to take this person on because I didn't hide. So we're going to have to go ahead and take this on. Now, these are our two rumors we have in our hand, and she says we have to discard one. Now, we really just got this planes one, but I'm in the place where I can get this armor, and I think it's wise to keep the armor. I know it's going to actually cause us to go backwards in time because I'm going to lose this, and this was one of the things we needed. So I'm going to discard our rumor in order to keep this rumor since, and it's only because I'm going to be able to find it in this location. Now, that might not have been the best plan, but that's the plan we're going with. Now, we have to go ahead and take on this nature spirit. So our nature spirit here and our vampire are going to go to battle. Now, of course, our nature spirit gets three attack dice up here. She's already got more than us because she gets an extra die because she surprised us. We only get three. So we're going to see how this goes. Hopefully we can take this down. This could be a bad maneuver here. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we got one hit. She also got one hit. So we are down to two health points, and she does take one point of damage. Now, she loses the surprise die because we're moving into the next round. So now it's mono e mono. I have two, she has two. Let's see how this goes. All right, we got one success. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Okay, we got one success. We're going to go ahead and give her another damage. Now we have to do one more point of damage. Oh, man, this is kind of tense. Hopefully we can do it. Come on, let's do it. Oh, she got one damage, but look at that. We, <laughs> we totally rocked her at the end. We got three hits. We only need to do one more, but she did do one more point of damage to us, bringing us down to one health. Wow, that was really lucky again. Okay, we've gone ahead and taken this nature spirit out. We're going to gain the rewards. So our vampire was successful, and on the bottom of her card, it says energy drain. Whenever you defeat an enemy, heal one HP and gain one move HP. I'm going to gain the health but I'm not gonna gain any other AP because I don't plan on moving. I'm just gonna stay right where I am, especially since I only have two. Well, actually, you know what? I will, what the heck? Who knows? I might use it. I'm gonna put the AP for the move right there, and we're gonna go ahead and look at our sprite, or spirit. She gives us one gold, or I can draw something from the loot bag bucket. I think we're gonna take the loot bag because that, again, one gold isn't all that great. We're gonna take the loot bag, and let's see what we get. We got wicker basket. Draw two loot tokens. Uh, oh, okay. Um, we got a wicker basket. That's fantastic. All right. So we got, and I guess we'll take it. Now I can either again take an item as a rumor or I can keep her, but we are looking for enemy as one of our keywords for our saga. So we're going to go ahead and keep her. That's going to be our plan. So we have a wicker basket and we also have a room, two different rumors here that we can actually take advantage of. One's going to help with our saga and the other one I'm about to use. All right, so we're going to go on to the rest of our vampire's turn. Now, sadly, the only AP I have left to use is that move AP, and I don't want to move. What I really wanted to do was do a discover action so that we could actually find our armor here, but sadly, I don't have any AP left to do that because I took too much damage, meaning I lost the AP that I would have used to use this discover action to find our armor. So instead, she's going to have to make camp for the night, which brings us to the end of our turn, and we're going to move into the night phase. And at this point, if any of our heroes were at these type of locations, that's where we would lose health based on the number here. None of our characters are there. We're all in okay places that have yet to fall into gloom. Now the first player or first hero is the one that has to draw the knight card, but it's not really going to matter because we're playing cooperatively amongst ourselves as to who's going to draw this. But normally our watcher would be the one that would draw this card because she is the first hero. So we're going to go ahead and take the top knight card and see what it is. Oh, it's war. Reveal. Doom guard gain one Fate. Well, we're not the Doom Guard, so we don't get any of that. Now, all heroes can choose a side if they want. Well, I think we're going to stay as the Rosen Guard for now, but we could choose to flip over to the Doom Guard at this point if we wanted to. It says down here, political factions across Killforth wage war upon each other instead of burying their dif differences to unite against the gloom. So the Forsaken Glade is going to fall into gloom. So our Forsaken Glade is located right down here in the bottom corner, and that is going to be going to Gloom. Oh, look at this one. If we're stopped in our camp in this location, we're going to be taking two damage. 
And now we're gonna move into the Dawn where we're gonna gain AP equal to our health. So she's gonna get back two AP. This was that move AP we decided not to use. And we're gonna put it there so she can do two actions this turn. Now she can also make some move action if she wants to because I do have this where I could veil this and gain one move AP. So if I really needed to move, I could do that. Now, of course, when you veil something, you're gonna turn it 90 degrees. Now, when you do veil something like this, you do lose the bonuses that this card provides. So it's something you might wanna think about in and maybe in emergencies to try to use that. But if you think you might be going to something that's gonna be needing those values, veiling that wouldn't be the best plan. Now our Watcher is going to only gain one AP because she only has one health. And also we're gonna pass the first hero token to the character who made camp first. And well, it was our Watcher. So we're okay, she's just gonna keep it. And she's gonna use her one AP to do a rest and try to heal up some health so she can maybe get some more AP next turn. And that's gonna be her action for the turn. Now our vampire is going to go ahead and use an AP. She's going to use this first AP to go ahead and discover. She's going to discover our armor set we have here. So we're going to put this into our assets. So since we're at the Fool's Den, we're allowed to put this into our assets area. Now there's these six asset squares here. You can only at any time under have six assets. You can never have any more than that. And also right here, it shows an asterisk armor. You can only ever carry or have in your assets area one asterisk. And so if we ever found any other armor and we wanted to put it into our assets, we'd have to remove this armor piece and replace it. So let's see what it says here. Enters play, place three HP on this card. Whenever you would lose an HP, you may discard one HP from this card instead. You cannot have surprise, so this makes a lot of noise. An armored suit of laced breastplate and skirt. So we're gonna go ahead and put that here. We're gonna place our three health tokens just right on top of this card. So hopefully next time we get into combat, we can move some from this and hopefully keep our AP going. Now, since our Watcher has made camp, we're again gonna go ahead and move with our Vampire. She's gonna use her card here that says she gains one move AP, her horsemanship. She's gonna bail that card, meaning we're gonna turn it 90 degrees and she's gonna move into this location. Now, there's already an encounter card here, so I don't have to draw a new encounter card. I'm not gonna deal with this. Instead, I'm gonna use my last AP I have to go ahead and move yet again. And we're gonna take advantage of this card, which is gonna send us back to the Serene Lake, just like we came here before. We're gonna take the move action over to there. So after our trek out a little bit to get some armor, we're back to the Serene Lake along with our Watcher. Now there's no encounter card here, so this time we do have to draw an encounter card. So we're gonna take the top card from our planes deck and see what it is. It is visitation revealed weakest hero performs an influence three test if you pass you gain one spell wow that'll be pretty good it says an ancient of light has been spotted perhaps awoken from its slumber by the chaotic gloom all right so our weakest hero is actually our stranger or watcher sorry our watcher so we're gonna have to go ahead and do a influence three test now, of course, the only bad thing about this is her influence is pretty much her worst stat here, well, other than her stealth. She only has two. So we're gonna go ahead, roll up two dice. Now, I don't really know what we're gonna do. I need to get three, I need three successes. We'll see how this goes. All right, I got two threes. Well, those aren't either successes at all, so we have failed that test. Now, since we didn't pass the test, we're gonna go ahead and discard this event. It doesn't stay there until you're able to successfully do it. It's an event, it happens, and it's done. So that's, again, the end of our actions. She's gonna go ahead and go into camp. She's gonna camp, she's already camping, so we're gonna draw another night card. Since we're not on any gloom space, so we don't have to take any damage, we're gonna draw our top night card and see what happens. We have found troop maneuvers. Rose and Knights may each discard one card from anywhere in play. All heroes gain one gold, then choose sides. Oh, that's kind of good. In a garish display of might and pride, legions of soldiers march abroad to deter their enemies. All right, so since we're the Rose and Knights, we may discard one card from anywhere in play. Hmm. Well, I don't really know too many places that we can get rid of things. We could decide to get rid of this card if we want since it's in play, but I don't know, this actually, I might go back and do this at some point for five gold, that's really good. And it's not too tough for our watcher because it has only three under its study and she starts with five. So I'm actually gonna keep that one out there. Then of course we have the religious, what is this? The religious cult up there as well. We could do this one if we wanted to. I don't really see a reason for this being on the board at all. 
I think getting rid of this isn't a bad idea. I could go get a spell there though. No, we're, we are gonna discard this card from the board from because of our knight card here. So our troop maneuvers are done. We are each gonna gain one gold. Now we can choose sides. So this is a new thing that has happened inside Shadows of Killforth, which is really cool. Since we started the game, we when we did, we chose to be the knights, the Rosen Knights. Now, of course, we could also choose to be the other one as well, but if we do, we wouldn't have got this bonus. Now, of course, there are different cards that help each one. So some are gonna help the Rosen Knights, some are gonna help the other one as well. Now, at the end of this one, it does say choose side. So I could choose to flip back over to this one if I wanted to, but we're gonna stay as the Rosen Knights because I think it's kind of cool. Now, the bad thing is, of course, our Smoky Mesa has to fall into gloom, so we're gonna go ahead and flip that one. So we're going to be having to put a plot card here because in our setup here, we have this ancient out. And this ancient says, whenever a mountain location falls into gloom, place one random plot on it. Now, plots are a little bit different than some of the other cards. We're going to take the top one and I'll show you what it does. It's the Chamber of Flesh. So the way this works, it gives you a little bit of synopsis here, and I'll read this shortly. It's an enemy and it's undead, so it does have keywords that you're able to take. Now also it says down here, it gives an ability here to defeat it. You have to sacrifice an ally. All right, and it also gives an extra bonus to the ancient. So right here it says, the breathing cave, the locals call it, though disgusted, horrified whispers. As you enter, you note that the walls glisten and pulsate, secretions of liquids oozing from its orifices that resemble ghastly wounds. A foul-smelling mist clings to the sticky floors, which crunch underfoot. Wet, sucking, belching noises echo from deep within the noxious hole, which is littered with the bones of previous explorers. Proceed with caution. <laughs> All right, proceed with caution. All right, ancient ability. Now this is how his ability that he's gonna get if we do not decide to de take out this plot. It said, treat all allies as though their other ability text and attribute bonuses are blank. Okay, so we won't be able to use anything about our allies. All right, that's amazing. So we're gonna put this right here. We might wanna make our way over here to try to take out this plot so we don't have to deal with that. So now again, we're gonna move into the dawn. We're gonna go ahead and take our two AP because we have two health. Now we also gained a gold because of our knight card. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that as well. She's all set. She again is gonna keep the first hero token because of course she did go into camp first. Our vampire as well is going to gain two AP and she's also gonna gain that one gold. Now before our watcher goes, we also have to go ahead and unveil our vampire's card so she can gain the benefits of it. And now we're gonna move, our watcher is going to probably spend one AP to move this turn. She's gonna move up here. And then she's gonna go ahead and reveal an encounter in the forest. Remember, she's still trying to get forest, plains, and mountain in order to do her first chapter. So we're gonna go ahead and see what she finds in the mountains, or the forest, I mean. She has found an event called home, revealed. Add the first place from the forest deck to any adjacent location and place your claim token on it. Only you can encounter this place. To other heroes, it does not exist. The drive to protect one's family is strong. All right, so it's an event that happens. We're gonna go until we can find our first place from the forest deck and then we'll put it in an adjacent place. So let's go ahead and pick up our deck and look for the first place. So the place we found is the Spirit Grove. We're gonna go ahead and place this in another location. And from here it says relocate to any location if you are able to get the trophy off this card. It says the veil here is thin. So those attuned to the fabric of reality can manipulate it to their advantage. I think we're gonna place this right up in the forging castle. That's gonna be our plan. That's her first action. We're gonna move on to our vampire now who has two actions as well. Now she's still looking for a plains and a stranger in order to complete her first part of her saga. So she's gonna stay right where she is because most likely a plains or a stranger will come out of this deck. She's gonna use a search action by using one of her AP to grab the top card off our plains deck and search the location. Let's see what she finds. She has found romantic interest revealed. First hero performs an influence for, oh, I wish she would've been the first hero. If she passes, draw three allies, choose one to put into play as an asset, discard the rest and attach this card to it to gain its study bonuses. Wow, this card does not count as an asset. 
Oh, wow. So you could have seven with this thing. Whispered words, shy laughter, and iliac wine. All right. Hmm. All right. So we have to go ahead and resolve this. Now, sadly, the first player is our watcher, not our vampire. So we have to do an influence four test. I think it's going to be a mute point. I don't think there's anything she can do. She only has two influence to begin with. And the most you can get is obviously two successes from this. And then she can only use one AP or sorry, one fate token a turn. That's it. So there's really no way she can actually pass this test. So I think we're just going to go ahead and discard this. Now for our watcher's second action, I think again, she's gonna use one AP just to rest so she can get her health back. The more health we have, of course, the more action points we get, and then we can continue to do more things each turn. And sadly, I think that's exactly what our vampire is going to do as well. She's gonna use an action point to be able to heal herself one HP. So again, we're gonna be moving into our night phase, and that means our watcher being the first person is going to go ahead and be drawing a night card. Let's see what she finds. She has found Political scheme event. When breaking camp ends, Rosen Knights lose one AP. Oh, the Doom Guard gain an AP. Choose sides. Maybe I should beat the Doom Guard. <laughs> this is terrible. Plots to overthrow the supposedly tyrannical local government are uncovered by the secret police. The Sea of Clouds has fallen into gloom. So our Sea of Clouds is located right down at the bottom of the board. And it says right here, heroes may perform one move action here to move directly to the Imperial Forest. And sadly, that was our plan. I was going to be moving the Watcher in that direction. But sadly, I don't know if we're going to do that now because now this is in gloom. Also, it's a mountain, so I have to draw a plot card for our Reaver of Flesh or whatever. And it says here, Tentacles of Flesh, the Render of Flesh. Okay, right. Enemy and Animal. So if I needed these keywords, again, I could go and deal with this. It says... There's a place in a dying corpse of trees where a creature is said to live beneath the marshy ground, waiting for unsuspecting travelers to pass. Thousands of quivering tentacles surge upward to ensnare its victims, dragging them into the muddy bog for the monster to consume at its pleasure. You must hunt and eradicate this thing. So defeat it, lose AP equal to your hero's skill level. Oh, that's not too bad right now. I'm only skill level one. So I could probably go in and just probably take this thing down. Ancient ability, veil all spells. Okay, so if we don't take this out before our ancient comes to the board and we fight him, he's going to gain this ability, and that's going to be a pretty bad ability. So our Sea of Clouds has gone into gloom, and the tentacles of flesh are upon it. So maybe it's not too bad to come moving over here to take care of that. And this game is just fighting me tooth and nail. Again, right here it says, when breaking camp ends, Rosen Knights lose one AP. So I'm going to get three AP, but then I'm going to lose one. Wow, I did all that time just to heal, just to lose the AP again. That's terrible. All right. Also, she did go to camp first, so she is going to reclaim this first hero token. Now, I do have a map down here that allows me to locate to any Badlands if I want to, but we need to go there right yet. We're going to go get our vampire all set up as well. So since our vampire is also a member of the Rosen Knights, she, again, is only going to get 2 AP. She gets 3, but then she's going to lose when she breaks camp. So she is down to 2 as well. And now we're going to be moving into our next turn, but we're going to do that in the next video. Here we are, Shadows of Killforth. Our board looks like this. We do have some places that have fallen into gloom, so we have to watch out for those. Our timer's slowly ticking down, and sadly, this game is fighting us back really tough. Every time I think I'm going to be going two steps forward, I take one step back, just like Paul Abdul. Now, the problem is we need to try to get through our sagas as fast as we can so we can get those ancients out so we can take them down. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit that bell symbol, and you'll know when the next video comes out for Shadows of Killforth. And as always, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. How do you think we're doing with these standees? Do you think I should keep them up like this so you can see them? Or should I take them off their standees so that they're on the board themselves? Is that better for you to be able to see? It's up to you to tell me what you think. I would like to make sure this playthrough is as easy for everybody to understand as possible. Also, I've got a vampire and a watcher, and I keep calling him watcher and vampire. If anybody has some great names for these people, that'd be great. One for the watcher would be perfect, and one also for the vampire. No, nothing from Twilight, please. That would be awesome. So if you have some great names, I would love to hear what you think. All right, that's it. This is Shadows of Killforth. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. So